my God, that is, that is quite something. Look at this, two 812 super fast. Oh my God, it's just it's never ending. This is ridiculous. What a beast. This is the first time I see one in real. Oh my God, 765 LT. Right, so it's obviously getting harder and harder to film car content for you guys as things get more and more locked down. First of all, I hope you guys are doing okay, that you're safe and healthy. But I get asked all the time, if I come to Monaco, where can I see the most supercars? And usually I give all the best car spotting spots, but it's pretty tricky at the moment because none of the cars are coming out. Therefore, I was thinking all the cars must be in the car parks. And the other day, we went to a car park which was completely jam-packed full of supercars. So why not just bring you guys there, show you some of the cars, run through the cars one by one. I'm pretty pumped to see what's in there because they seem to be changing all the time. And yeah, just thought let's go do some car park spotting in Monaco. We need to take the car though. So we're driving over there. You okay in the back? Yeah, I'm good. All good. We're driving over there. It's actually a spot we go to all the time, like where we film most of our car videos. You know that spot where there's um, the kind of like background of Monaco and it always looks like we're about to drive the cars right into the sea? It's that spot right there. It's called the Digue. It's like the Monaco's pontoon where there's a lot of boats and stuff often. Um, and so we're always heading there, but not often actually in the car park because we're always staying slightly out of it. But there are so many nice cars there and it's a public car park. That's why we can film this video. There are so many others privately, you know, like private for buildings uh, car parks. And um, we didn't feel comfortable filming in any of those. But trust me, like some of those you'll go in and it's literally just like a, a motor show in those things. I went to one once where there was, I think, two or three Koenigseggs, two Chirons, a LaFerrari, an Enlargo, loads of different things. So yeah, it's pretty nuts. If you know the car, car parks to go to here, you can get some pretty cool stuff. Now then. And it's Ooh, a public one. This is a public one, yeah. So anyone can go in this at any time. So if you're coming down, the start finish straight of the F1 is down here. What you do is you go up to the right here, past the International School of Monaco, and then it's at the end of this road down here. So we're at the entrance of the car park. This is where all the boats are. So we've got the port on our right. And then you just come in here, ask for your little ticket, in we go. All right, we're trying our best. I've taken my mask off. The lighting's not great, but as soon as we walk in here, there's already some cool things. And I know that the floor underneath is actually where, for some reason, a lot of the cars get parked. It's actually simpler. It's a weird parking. Simpler to get to that floor than this one for supercars. Anyways, we've got a BMW M4, brand spanking new looking. It's got new, um, new car plates on it as well, with competition wheels in orange, very nice. McCann Turbo, 911 Turbo S. We're gonna be going through these quite a bit because there are so many cars in this garage. This one I've actually made a full video with. Um, this is, I believe, a Vantage. Let me just check. I'm not great with old Astons. It's not, is it written anywhere? No, I believe it is a Vantage. That may be completely wrong, and if it is, I'm so sorry. But I think it is, Italian plates. S63 Coupe, those are very, very cool depreciated massively actually, but this one's got the full carbon diffuser on the back. Wait, look, if I put my torch on that right there, you'll be able to see a full carbon diffuser. That's quite rare on these. We've got also, doesn't this look a bit lowered? This is a McCann Turbo, no, a McCann GTS. It's got the GTS wheels right here, but it looks like it's been lowered. Very cool looking. Looks like the old generation over there looks so much older. Ooh, Audi R8, very nice. This is a V10 Spider Audi R8 with double clutch gearbox. Very nice facelift, same generation as mine. Very cool looking, actually not much carbon on it, but very cool. RS6, brand new RS6, doesn't even have a license plate on it. A45, Viano, GT3 RS, Martini. <laughs> now we're getting into the big boy stuff. Martini GT3 RS, that's very cool. No license plates on it either. Oh, now, okay, <laughs> this is what I saw as soon as we came in. What the hell is this thing? A four by four squared G-Wagon, but look, 700 right here. Do you know what that means? It's a Brabus. So first of all, look at the carbon wheel arches. Awesome looking. On the, on the standard um, G4 by four squared, only half of the wheel arch is carbon with the Brabus kit, the whole thing. It's got the tires 
pumped down like it's about to go sand driving. But yeah, this thing is an animal. Bi turbo, 700 horsepower, G 4x4 squared, just dumped in a car park. What an animal. And it's got, there's a Jeep next to it. This thing is so sick. These are worth a lot of money. I don't know how much, but a lot. Anyways, let's go down to the next floor. This is where things get sick, believe it or not. This was the almost like more chilled, relaxed floor. Things get pretty serious downstairs. Oh, and it's about to get very serious. Now, as you can tell, there's still a ton of spaces which aren't full. And what's really cool is they're always, these cars are always changing. I don't know, like the owners or whoever's putting, dealerships, whoever's putting these cars here are constantly changing. So every time you come, there's new cars. Like I haven't seen any of these cars before. Now, you walk in and you're greeted by a, a, a boat, basically, a brand new Rolls-Royce Phantom 8, really cool. Now we're gonna be looking at the specs of some of these. This has like a dark tan interior. You won't be able to see it because the lighting only gets better down there. Really cool, extremely expensive first car to be greeted by. I don't know who's, it looks like it's privately owned. Look, have you seen how he's parked as well? The levels of care while doing that are extremely low. Look at this. I'm sorry, but that is insane for a public car park. There's just a line of supercars. There's, I'm sure maybe in Dubai, you maybe get some of this, but here, I mean, it's nuts. Let's not forget, really cool, Cayenne Turbo Coupe. Really nice wheels, actually. Are these stock? They look like they are. Very nice. That's, that's cool. That's like a, looks like an Urus a bit. Uh, then what do we have? We have a DB11 Volante. Nice paint color, very metallic paint on this. I've never been hugely convinced by the DV11s. Paul, Paul Wallace, Supercars of London, loves these things and kept telling me about them. I've always been more of a Vantage guy. Conveniently, there's one right here. Because um, DV11, I don't know, it's more expensive than the Vantage, but does it, does it a bit less for me. This actually has an even more metallic. Look at that. So James Bondy. Oh, we've got a car starting up and going. Oh, the noise of that isn't too bad. Range Rover, oh it is. This paint is ridiculous, so cool. This looks awesome, full piano black kind of finish. No carbon on this one. Next to that we've got a Portofino. So Portofino replaced the California, California T. This is a nice color as well, much less metallic. Look at that, so you can see there's a bit of flake in it. But when you compare it to the Aston one, I hope that comes off on camera. Yep. Massive difference. Cool looking. Which would you have? Portofino or Vantage? Vantage. Yeah? Yeah, I think I would probably have the Vantage as well. This one's taking a beating. I love how we're just like this one. Like, oh yeah, completely normal. There just happens to be another one. This is beautiful. This paint, slightly metallic, not too much, but very deep blue. But look, oof, something's hit pretty hard there. That's nasty looking. Nice spec though. Nice wheels. Right, let's keep going because we've got a few cars to go through. Bentley Continental GT V8. This, again in blue. Oh, really nice blue. Look at that. Very flat. No flake in it. But that works. All these cars are quite dusty. You can tell they're, they're not moving around all over the place. Very nice. What else? 599 GTB. This is the engine of the Ferrari Enzo. Naturally aspirated V12. I believe around six, I think 600, 605 horsepower. I've always loved the size of the rear diffuser on these. And obviously it's kind of the precursor to the 599 GTO, which is arguably one of the most loved kind of modern-ish Ferraris. Very nice paint on this though. You can tell the paint's got a lot of swells in it. And it's pretty aged. Decently old car. Nice spec though, black on black with the silver wheels. Very, very classy. F1 gearbox, it's not a manual. If it was a manual, it would be worth about four times more. These are actually starting to kind of climb up again a tiny bit in value. Um, very cool. This is sick. 488 Pista, but 488 Pista, and look, this is matte factory. This isn't a wrap, is it? No, no, that's paint. Matte factory paint. I don't want to touch the car, but I believe that is a painted um, stripe. Carbon everywhere, look, it's got the full carbon front splitter. Doesn't have the carbon lights. But what else does it got in carbon? Oh, it's got the carbon um, here, Ferrari logo. Gloss black wheels, very nice. Gloss black on the matte paint. The red calipers, Ferrari shields. Carbon on the air intake there. Carbon back here, yeah. This is a heavy, heavy spec. 
I don't know if you can tell, but that is a full, full red Alcantara interior. The steering wheel's even red and the flappy panels are red, red as well. Oh my God, what a spec. What plate is this? Monaco. That is, that's quite something. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah? Um, you, you would have a spec like that? Maybe not. Already. It's a little bit bold. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. Look at this. Two 812 Superfast right next to each other. Erwan, left or right? Left. Left? Yeah, I think I'd go left as well, just from first glance. Obviously, there's the stripe on this, which is paint. Yeah, look at that. Metallic flake in the paint. So that will be an expensive option. Full carbon front splitter. That's pretty impressive to see. Not many 812s actually have this. Full carbon, whereas this one right here, you can see what it looks like without the carbon. It's kind of that gray finish. This is a much more metallic classic gray. This is a much more flat Nardo gray. Both sports seats. This one's got the harnesses. That one's got the Daytona finish on the seats. Strong specs, but I mean, the one with the stripe will be like 50,000 more than this one right here. I reckon, because look, I mean, it's got carbon everywhere. Side skirts, it's got carbon mirrors. Look at that, again, to compare. That's what the carbon mirror looks like. That's what the stock mirror looks like. This is what the stock door handle looks like. This is what the carbon door handle looks like. Now, not to flex, but I do have a carbon door mirror on the scooter wheel. Not to flex, but I'm gonna flex. Oh, look at this, it's got the tinted rear window. Full carbon rear diffuser, black exhaust tips. Whereas on this side, you got that classic rear diffuser with the non-blacked out exhaust tips. Very, very nice though, both of those. Comment which one you'd have. Also, oh my God, it's just, it's never ending. This is ridiculous. This is an F8 Tributo Spider next to a 488 Pista Spider. The F8 Tributo literally replaced the 488. And seeing those now is already rare enough, but seeing them side by side is really cool. It's crazy how I never thought they'd look that different, but there's a pretty substantial difference between the, the way these things kind of hit you. It looks kind of wider and lower, doesn't it, the F8? Which do you prefer? Yeah, F8. F8? Yeah. Comment down below, guys. I mean, the F8 isn't a particularly wacky spec. It's a very flat, there's no flake, very flat kind of base color yellow, but it does have a lot of carbon in the lights. Full carbon front diffuser, um, splitter, sorry. Ca even carbon in that Pista-inspired air, well, air kind of passageway there. Um, carbon down on the Ferrari logo as well. It's got the Ferrari shields. I've never liked the way the Ferrari shields look on yellow cars unless the yellow's matched, because doesn't that just look weird having like two different yellows? I don't know, that's always been something that's bothered me. It's got the, the Daytona finished comfort seats. Look, carbon all the way here. And this is actually new. I'd never seen this before, but look, all on the engine bay, that you don't have on the pistas. On this one, it's just a stripe. And obviously, oh wow, look at that. Four lights, that's the easiest way to tell the difference. And then when you come onto here, you got one light, but see, look, that's all finished in the stripe, which is a very nice stripe, actually, metallic finish, but no carbon. The F8 looks very good, doesn't it? Wow, that's pretty impressive. This piece is a strong spec as well. It looks pretty brand new, but look, full carbon all over. Yeah, this one's very cool. I like this stripe they've done. Oh, that's a very nice looking car. You know what it is? It's like, there's not actually that much of a difference, but for some reason they look pretty different. Because look, even if you look at this air outlet here, inside, there's kind of three capsules. I don't know if you get down lower, I don't know if you'll be able to. And then if you come over here, exactly the same thing, just here it's body colored and they've slightly changed it. So it's more visible on the F8. So it's very similar, but ever so slightly changed. Like the shape of this front diffuser, see here it kind of comes up and you have the stripe that accent accentuates that air vent or air passage there, which is a bit larger. Whereas here without the stripe, you don't notice it in the front Diffuser is kind of the way they've also used the carbon and the paint shows it off off less So you don't get that kind of like front nose diving as much. It's really cool to see anyway AMG GTS edition one very nice So these are the first ones that came about metallic paint as well all blacked out edition one You can tell from the rear wing fixed rear wing unless that's been put on some market, but I don't think so look at the state of that logo 
I mean, that's, this thing's had a long life. Completely tinted windows, tires are naked. Yeah, this thing has quite a few miles on it. Very cool though, you can pick those up for like really good value now. You know? <laughs> this is the dream. How sick is this? All black, non-striped. I actually really like the non-striped look. 458 Speciali, so this is actually really cool seeing them. So the, this car was replaced by the red car, which was replaced by the yellow car. So you're going down in time and it is, this does look older, but it'd still be my pick. If I had to pick one of the three, this would be a naturally aspirated V8. Really cool little spec, hidden spec options here. So no carbon around front, but silver. Um, these are actually aerodynamic details. They can open up depending on the speed that you're doing. So really cool to have those kind of accentuated. And another red Alcantara interior. Is that a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. I like, I like the... See, the, the Ferrari shield works with, um, with a black car like this. And the calipers. And the calipers. Yeah, but still, I don't know if I'm too OCD. Oh, yeah. right. If you're getting close, like that yellow is not the same as this yellow. And that bothers me. It really bothers me. I don't know why, but I guess it's just a bit OCD. Not much carbon on this one. In fact, like hardly any, just the engine bay. Just the engine bay, that's still pretty nice. And it hasn't, this would have looked much better, I reckon, with the blacked out exhaust tip. Right, is that everything? S63 coupe, what else can we see? There's a ton of BMWs. This X7 is huge. That front grille is the size of my living room. Okay, so we go to the next floor, because I mean, there are some impressive cars, but there's just a line of BMWs. The last floor, oh we. oh my God. Okay. Oh my God, a lot. where do we go? Where do we start? <laughs> a lot of cars. What a beast. Brabus, 800. So the one we saw, the 4x4 squared was a 700. This is an 800 twin turbo V8 based on a G63. Look at this, carbon everywhere. Oh shit, someone's had a little bit of a mishap there. This is an animal. Carbon everywhere. This <laughs> kind of annoys me. Like they're not even trying to make it look real. Like it's just completely filled in. We've got the Bramus rims. What does it say? Platinum edition monoblock 23 inch forged baller. Don't really know what that means, but <laughs> very nice. Anything that says platinum edition on it usually just means it's expensive. These are the Bramus exhaust tips. I also think these are the Bramus little lights there. Um, and then we got, oh my God. What is it with the red Alcantara interiors? Why, and on a Bramus? Jesus. What just happened? We've been filming so much in this car park that we've run out of memory and there's nothing we can delete. You can now go relax and <laughs> us and our torch are gonna keep looking around this thing. What an animal. So this is the Alcantara interior. You can see that the car's obviously completely brand new because it's still got the stuff in the seats. I don't quite get what this whole carbon action right here is, what the purpose is, but you know, I guess the, none of the carbon really has its purpose. Brabus, by turbo 800, look at that. Very cool. Metallic flake in this matte paint is ridiculous. And then you've got this huge carbon hood, massive carbon lights, well, like LED running lights up there. But again, like, they're not even trying. Look at that, just completely filled in. Massive B. This thing is an animal. What do you think? I, does it make me a bit of a douchebag if I really like this thing? I really like it. You approve? Yeah. Are you going to keep deleting? No, you're going to come look at these cars with me. Come explore. What the hell is that thing? It's French. It's De Vinci, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder what 98 stands for. This thing is pretty wacky. Does it have two seats? No way. Look at the suspension. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. Isn't that? That's insane. But wait, is it? It's a two seater, right? And that's just one roll bar. Pretty nuts. Then we've got an Alpine. Very similar to the one I used to have. This isn't a premier edition now. This is just a slightly more normal one with the blue paint. And you can tell that actually because of the wheels. It's not the premier edition wheels. 997 Carrera S right there. Another one, 997 first gen Abarth. Cayman, I'm much less of a fan of the Cayman since they put the um, four cylinders on them. Matt Brabus, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah, I really, it's very bold, but I like it. Now, this is a line of Porsches. I've been 
practicing or teaching Erwan Easy. about 9-11s. Which one is this? 991.1, 991.2 or 9.9.2? It's the first one. 991.1? No. I'm joking. Look at the light, <laughs> the LED. It's a 991.2, exactly. <laughs> because it's a straight light here and if it was a 0.1, it would come down here a little bit. This is a 991.1 Targa 4S, I believe, with the wider wheel latches. Yeah, there you go. So it's got the four, four wheel drive, you can tell also by that. Um, running, or oh, like light that goes all the way across the back. Another one here, non Targa, normal 4S. Then we got a 992. Now, that also has the straight running light, but the running light is divided. Now, I don't know if you can tell. Um, Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, that was on the turbos. My bad. On the turbo, you have two of these. And on the normal, you have one. But the easiest way to tell is actually that it's just very square. But I'll demonstrate. Very square at the front, whereas on the other ones, it's much more rounded. So that's the easiest way to tell from the front. And then you've also got the lights, which you can tell are a little bit different. But that's, these are actually quite expensive, these, these option lights. There's two of those. So I love how there's just two of each. They come in pairs. Little... McCann to break things up. Then another, by the way, that one was convertible. This one is cool. Another 992. Okay, what's this? Which one? This one. The 991. Point. The first gen because you can see the LED. There you go. See, that's where it comes around here. That's the easiest way to tell. Very good. This isn't like a, look like kind of a dark. Brown. Is it? it? Looks like. I think it might be. It's very hard to tell. Yeah, it is, I think. Very, very dark. 992, nice one. With the black yeah. wheels. 991.2. 991.2. Why are there so many Porsches here? Oh shit, I just realized. <laughs> we completely <laughs> forgot to mention that there is a Gran Turismo Sport and a McLaren. Well, let's look at the Gran Turismo first quickly. Gran Turismo Sport. Now, it's not the S. They call it the Sport because it's half the facelift. So it's got the MC Stradale kind of front end. It's actually a sport single clutch gearbox, these. And you can also tell through those seats. They, they're a different design to the first gen seats. So 4.7 litre V8 on this. Dual exhaust, yeah, the big blacked out dual exhaust. Gran Turismo Sport, very nice. 720S Spider. This one, does it have a lot of carbon? No, not really. Not a massive amount of carbon. Oh, it's got the wing mirrors. What's, oh, it's an Alcantara red and black interior. What's really cool with these is glass pillars right here. So when you look over your shoulder, you can see easily. Carbon, yes. Very nice. You like these, don't you? Yeah, but there is better. Yeah, you've been telling me this. <laughs> and let's see what there is. Okay, I can't believe we nearly forgot those. Oh, RS5 there as well. But very good looking. But the engine they've put in those is a little bit uh, snore. It uh, doesn't sound particularly good, does it? Oh, you got that camera back? Yeah. You sure you didn't delete anything essential? We're back on the big camera. Maybe it was actually better on the small camera, I don't know. What do we have? We have another, <laughs> yeah, another Porsche. This, close place to, to my heart, and you guys obviously know if you watch the channel, this is my next flex, <laughs> is that this is very similar to the R8 that I had. A V10 Plus, so it's got carbon everywhere. But this is actually, this isn't a manual. So this is a double clutch S-Tronic. So they're, they're much less rare, but they still look so cool. However, I am kind of getting bummed out because I really considered painting my wheels gloss black like this, and they look so good. They look very good, don't they? Any regrets? Well, you're not really helping, are you? <laughs> um, we've got... Is this white or baby blue? It's a 570S Spider. Yeah, this is baby blue, isn't it? I literally feel like I'm at a motor show because at motor shows I would just walk around and talk about all the cars. This is exactly what we're doing now. Look, metallic. And this is only a three floor car park. There's one uh, at the train station, which has some cool cars in it as well, which is 16 floors. Imagine that. Right, another Porsche. They're quite popular. This has a red interior as well. What is going on? Why, what's with the red interiors these days? The leather one. Yeah, okay, here's a challenge for you because now it's from the back and not the front. 991.1, 991.2 or 992? One. 991? Yeah, sure. Point? I don't know from the back. Okay, two. Yeah, because the, the lights are cut out on the point one, they're not. Uh, GLEs, a couple of GLE 63s. 
This is like the AMG corner right here. CLA 45S. So impressive. There must be, yeah, there's dealerships involved here. All those other Porsches were for sale. Still very, oh, wow. 600 LT Spider. Is this black as well? Yeah, this is black. Metallic black, not much carbon on it, but very, very nice. I love these. They look so good. I just wish they didn't depreciate as much because they're such a cool car. So good to drive carbon here and here. Why has it got a bin bag on it? <laughs> very random. Looks awesome. More carbon. Now, I know what's over here because you've told me about it. And this is the first time I see one in real. Wow. Let's wait for this car to go. Oh my God. 765 LT. That looks so much cooler than on photos. Outrageous. Very convenient again. Why have we been this lucky to have a 720S <laughs> parked right next to it for comparison? This is outrageous. They've completely changed the look of the car. I mean, this grill, whole new material, very nice. The exhaust, I can literally like fit my hand in each one of those, and there's four. But the rear diffuser. Yeah, the rear diffuser. And look, if you come down, you can see the gearbox. There's like nothing hiding anything. So, and you can see like all the exhaust system. If you look like carefully, you can actually see the valves. Yeah, apparently they spit like crazy flames as well. Very cool. And look, oh my God. So the engine, oops, sorry, the engine bay is actually inside. Can you see that? Yep. So in the cabin, you have the engine. Wow, I have, first time I've ever seen one. Very, very nice, carbon everywhere. What a spec as well. Is this your favorite car we've seen today? Sure. Also, I love how we're just completely ignoring this <laughs> 720 Spider, which is also very nice, carbon every, wow, this is, wow. Literally just carbon all over. Stars with the carbon. Oh, this is another Stars car, is it? Uh, that makes sense. They, they go in with the specs, wow. The size of the wing, look how different the wing is as well. See how it's cut out here, completely cut out, and then here it's completely flat. You yeah, know, it's missing something. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the annoying thing when these like hardcore versions come out. It then means when you see the stock version, you're like, oh, now I see what this could be. It does look a little bit, oh, I'm going to get so much hate if I say this. It looks a little bit like tuna car. I'm, I'm not saying that like a bad thing. I'm just saying, it's all, I'm almost saying that as a compliment because it means they've actually had the balls to like make it so different. Whereas often with these hardcore versions, they don't change much. It's very, very nice. I like the rims as well. Very concave then. Look, look how slick the tires are. What do we have? We have an AMG GT S four door. It's very confusing all these names, isn't it? This is pretty cool actually. So it's got like a similar wing to the edition one that we saw. But this is all carbon, it looks like. First of all, are those ceramics? No. Okay, steel brakes. Carbon, carbon. Cool exhaust. They actually look really cool in chrome like that. This is nice. Ooh. White with white interior. Even the steering wheel. Jeez. Full carbon interior. Carbon mirrors. Those are very cool. I actually really like these. Is there, oh, this one's for sale. 2,160 kilograms made in Germany. We'd figure that one out. Wow. Is that everything? I think that's everything. <sighs> this is going to be a long, this is more like a podcast than a video. We could just do like the chronicles of Monaco car parks. Um, no, really cool to see this. I mean, the, the purpose of this is to also show you guys if ever you, you're able to come visit Monaco. Like if you can't see cars outside, if it's a day where there aren't cars outside, the cars are somewhere, they're always here. And often even in the public car parks. So even if you come and you're disappointed in the spotting or it's a, you know, Corona times like we're in today and you can't see the cars, don't lose hope. <laughs> the cars are still here. You just need to know where to look. So I hope this helps. Hope you enjoyed it. Your favorite car is this one. Yeah. Mine is either this or the 458 Speciali. You comment down below what your favorite is and let's end the video there. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers. Bye bye.